The Burning God. Wait, 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 wait. You just interviewed the author. That's bias. Look, I think I'm okay. I know how to have a conversation with someone and not let it sway my overall room. Impossible. Dislike, unsubscribe. Look, I respect and appreciate the fact that my audience is going to spend money based off what I say. Don't care, it doesn't matter. Dislike, unsubscribe. Moving on, The Burning God by Rebecca Kwong is one of the fantasy books that I would say is in like the top 10 of most anticipated this year. A lot of people talk about this series, especially because Time Magazine put the first and second book on its top 100 fantasy books of all time list. God damn, and I think expectations are pretty much through the roof for this concluding chapter to the trilogy. And I have a lot of thoughts here on the series as a whole and this final book, so this might kind of turn into a series review a bit, please forgive that, but I have just things I need to say that kind of contextualize the purpose of The Burning God. Because the Poppy War series, it's not the typical intent from an author, I feel, when crafting this work, especially after talking with Rebecca Kwong in our recent interview. She seems to be very almost argument-driven, pulling from history, trying to encapsulate different ideas and pit them against each other. And in terms of that, going into this book with that mindset, mission accomplished. But I think a lot of the reason you see so much polarization around these books, I mean, if you look at the Goodreads even, there's just like ones and five stars on this more extreme, like people constantly having like heated love or hate for it. It's not just what everyone really wants in their fantasy. I think you need to go in with that mindset that this isn't someone who's trying to create the next Middle Earth. It's someone who's trying to use real life historical context to really push forward an examination of ideas and no question that was accomplished, but I also can't tell you as a reader to enjoy that. Like, if you don't like that, that's fine. It's just curious to see the response be so engaging, I guess is the best word. People really have a lot to say here, and I'd always rather that, right, than something that people are just like, meh on. There's nothing more boring for me than a meh book. And I feel like no one is meh on the Poppy War and the Dragon Republic. And the promise I'm gonna make for you in this review is almost no one's gonna feel that way about the burning God, especially when it comes to the delivery of emotion. There is so much passion in these pages, it bleeds off. And I know that's something I say all the time. Bleeds off is like one of my like catchphrases for reviews, but I, I mean it so powerfully here, especially in the mind of the main character. And that's gonna be the real focus of the first part of this review is Ren. She you can't love her, but you also empathize with her so greatly. She's so powerful in so many ways, yet so tremendously flawed. Her accomplishments are extraordinary, but her downfalls and her faults as a character are just tremendous. I am so conflicted on her because like you want to root for her at times, but then you realize you're rooting for someone who's going through a clear corruption arc. And that's not a spoiler. Like Rebecca Kwong has talked openly about the fact that that's what she's going for. So you need to go into this book thinking that because I think it actually better prepares you for the journey that unfolds. There was an interesting point in this interview with both Rebecca and Evan that was brought up where they were talking about in some of the reviews, it seems like people have a hard time putting themselves in the shoes of their protagonists. And especially with Ren, someone who is so beat down, so constantly just made to feel worthless and has such great power and potential, I can see how people could fail to make that connection. But once you do, you feel for this character so strongly, or at least I did, that it, it overwhelms a lot of the doubts you have. And again, you'll actually invest even more in those fist pump, yeah, victory moments for her, even though if you really think about it, you, 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 shouldn't, you, shouldn't, be, you shouldn't be rooting for that at all. No, it's a bad thing to say yeah to. So if you felt conflicted about Rin up until this book, I think you'll continue to. Actually, I think a lot of the people who have loved these books are going to continue to love them for the third one, and a lot of people who've had issues with them are going to continue. This isn't going to be the book that suddenly wins people over because it's not backing down on the purpose of the series. And that's actually the next thing I really want to touch on. The tone and theme of these books is, as I said at the beginning, it's making an argument, it's an examination, it's also hyper, hyper realistic. The ramifications of War. People always talk about like, oh, the author did such a good job of realizing how dark and bad war can get. But this is up there with like gold standard for me in terms of refugees, food shortages, and the long-term consequences after the fact. Yeah, that, that becomes a forefront huge problem in the narrative and I appreciated it. Uh, there's also the technological advancements and how if you introduce a new piece of technology to the battlefield, how it just 
everything changes, and that's something we've seen in real life repeatedly. I, I enjoy the mystic versus the technological here as well, and it's just one of the stronger elements at play. I do have a couple larger criticisms, though, uh, when it comes to the story as a whole. I didn't love the final scene, necessarily, even though it put probably the proper emotion in my gut, which is one that felt very appropriate for the story that was told in these three books. It was also just like, I wish you'd one more step so to speak. Uh, and finally, I think the last criticism I'm going to get into here is I am a slow fantasy fan in the sense that I want to really go through beat by beat everything required for the story. I want this to be like the most thorough exploration of the world that you can give me. And that's not what's done here. Uh, this actually just has a breakneck pace. I would say the pace is borderline just <laughs> if you're taking a breath or a moment in this story, it's because something's about to happen. There's never really a <sighs> but I get why, right? Like it would be antithetical to the vibe that's trying to be put into the reader to ever relax. And man, oh man, is the tension that I felt while reading this so visceral. Like I was tight in my muscles because it's just constant anxiety and paranoia. Not every plot line is perfectly wrapped up. It's a messy story, but that actually is just working with like what's happening in the overall world. Like you're not gonna have everything resolved when there's absolute chaos unfolding. So I can forgive it in that sense. So people who are really looking for a more traditional fantasy story with high beautiful prose are, you know, not gonna be satisfied here because that's not the way she writes. She writes in a brutal direct fashion and it's not the intent of the story. But in terms of accomplishing what the author wanted to, this is a pretty extraordinary example of that. There wasn't a ton of world growth, and there was one instance of a plot convenience that felt very not appropriate for how realistic this world has been so far. It felt like, here's a big problem, eh, 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 move on. As the reader, that just kind of grinded my gears. So in like conclusion, I guess for this wider review, in terms of what the Poppy War wants to be and the series final chapter, The Burning God, the whole painted picture is beautiful and it's getting the feeling in the viewer, the audience, the reader exactly that it should. Is it necessarily the most pleasant thing to look at or read? No, on a technical level and an emotional level. Like it's not the most poetic prose and it's it's not a pleasant read for a lot of reasons if you're a person who empathizes with characters and victims of war and things like that. My final thoughts are you'll cry, you probably won't laugh, you'll feel a bit of tension and anxiety, and you'll continue to be frustrated with the main character because she's not someone who's going to be making logical and proper choices. She's been beat down, twisted, and tortured to the point where yeah, that's not a person who's going to be doing the most uh, logical, rational things and live up to your moral standards. But that's the purpose of it. That's the point. Anyway, in terms of numbers, just remember that the overall review big one is how I enjoyed reading it on that scale. And then the bar breakdown where you see the numbers by like the ratings are the more technical approach. But for me, overall, The Burning God is going to be a 7.5 out of 10. It's... It's gonna cause discussion, man. So many people are gonna talk about this as one of the best of the best or a total letdown and not a satisfying the fantasy itch experience. I'm really excited to see my audience's reaction to this one as well. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you wanna support what I do here. And have a good one, y'all. Peace.